why are uranium stocks falling again? News was so good last week. So what is going on in this space? The Sprott Junior Uranium Miners ETF down approximately 10% over the last month. Had that big burst last week on Gazatom Prom revising the world supply of uranium down, right? But prices are back down. The S&P 500 over the last month is up 4%. Now, why is this not surprising at all? It's the same reason that seeing housing prices continue to get softer and softer isn't surprising, right? Because growth industries, capital intensive industries that rely on a low cost of capital just aren't doing well in this environment. This is the Federal Reserve's interest rate. Currently, the Federal Reserve is keeping it at 5%. And that is just strangling growth industries like real estate development, uranium miners, especially the juniors. Why are the more established uranium miners outperforming, right? Over the last month, they're only down 5% and the junior uranium miners are down 10% because the established uranium companies like Kazatom Prom, like Cameco are just printing cash, right? So they're not going to go down as much. They don't need more financing to get uranium out of the ground. So they're just way more profitable. Obviously, the S&P 500 is full of big tech companies that have hundreds of billions of dollars on their balance sheet. So it's a tale of two cities. Until this line falls or dips or something, the real estate industry will continue to be soft. Junior uranium mining will continue to be soft, but there will be a massive reckoning when growth outperforms value again. And what's really funny is the market is just completely discounting what is going on in this space. So it's like a ball being kept underwater as the fundamentals just get stronger and stronger and stronger every single week. For instance, we talked about last week how uranium stocks rise after the world's largest producer cuts 2025 output forecast. What does that mean? Well, a 10% cut to expected world uranium supply is the same amount that triggered the last bull contracting cycle. 2006, to 2012, when the Cigar Lake mine flooded. And so the overall setup is far better this cycle, right? And this occurs right on cue for the fall contracting season. So the assets with uranium in the ground just do continue to get more and more valuable. The assets that are producing uranium just continue swimming in profits. And just a reminder, when he's referring to the period previously when the world supply was cut significantly, it was back here when uranium skyrocketed up to $125. And so we're there now and the market is just sleeping on it currently, right? All short term. That's why when we go back to this price action, it is just all noise, right? The market hated uranium when the URNJ was $18.50. Then they loved it when Kazatom Prom revised guidance down and URNJ was 21 cents. Now all of a sudden they hate it at 19 cents. It's all total noise. Markets are not very smart especially in early stage growth industries. So why is this time even better than the previous time uranium skyrocketed over $130 per pound? Well, to start, we have Cantor Fitzgerald coming out with a brand new updated uranium supply demand model. So in the bars, we see the supply, right? All known supply. This isn't rocket science. There is not enough supply available. It's all obvious where the supply is. Experts understand it. And then in the orange, we see the reactor requirements. Again, not rocket science. We understand how many nuclear reactors there are around the world. We understand how much uranium they're going to require. So this is like the first year of a significant supply gap. And we've seen the price of uranium skyrocket over $80, right? Now there's short-term noise in the market, but what happens next? Obviously the supply gap just widens and widens and widens and widens for decades, right? So this is the first year. So that's one reason why it's different than the previous massive bull run. But what about the nuclear renaissance taking place? The massive ballooning demand for this resource. Switzerland moves to remove ban on nuclear reactors, right? Just lifting the lid on uranium demand. BWXT to evaluate defense-focused enrichment pilot plant. BWX Technologies has been awarded a contract by the U.S. Department of Energy's National Nuclear Security Administration to develop a centrifuge pilot plant to ensure a domestic supply of enriched uranium for defense purposes, right? We need a domestic supply. We don't have that right now, but the U.S. government 
is spending billions to make sure that that happens. Poland earmarks $1.2 billion to start first nuclear power plant. Again, lifting the lid on this space. NRC approves 20-year extension for North Anno 1 and 2. The USA's Nuclear Regulatory Commission has renewed the operating licenses of North Anno Nuclear Plants Units 1 and 2 for a further 20 years, extending their lifetimes to a projected 80 years, right? The lid is off this space. I keep saying it, but every single one of these headlines proves it. U.S. signs pact to build a small modular nuclear plant in Ghana. Serbia takes that to lift 35-year ban on nuclear power plants. This time is completely different. The space is totally different. Multi-decade bans on nuclear power are going away. And the future is all nuclear. <laughs>